Kyle friends. Welcome to another video from SQL BI. In this video, we'll explain how a modular approach to Power BI development can help save a lot of time when it comes to creating new models and new reports. To illustrate this, let's think about when we create a model or report for the first time. I like to think about it in terms of layers, layers of complexity, that is. The first thing I often need to do when I create a model is creating some measures to aggregate the columns, creating a date table, for example. Now these are foundational objects of our model, the basic elements which we typically always need. However, this is of course not where we're going to stop because for example, I need to combine these things in a time intelligence pattern with some additional measures. Now the end goal, at least in this case, is to create a Power BI visual or a report. And this is basically just a collection of different patterns and objects which once we assemble them together, can help fulfill a specific purpose, answer questions, and solve problems. If we think about our development this way, we can identify individual building blocks and patterns that we can reuse in templates and apply to new models and reports so we don't have to make them from scratch every time. And let me tell you, making something like this from scratch every time is not fun. So let's talk about how we can do this in a more practical way. A good way to think about modular development and design of Power BI is using the atomic design methodology. This is something originally created for user interface and user experience design, but it's also very useful for the creation of Power BI reports and data models. The whole idea behind the atomic design methodology is that it starts with this sort of metaphor, this biochemistry metaphor, that you start by creating atoms or your core foundational building blocks and you reuse and combine these in order to create more complicated things. These are like your molecules. They serve a purpose, but they aren't yet functional. The functional elements come later when you combine and mix these different molecules together to create organisms. This is about where that biochemistry metaphor ends. And in UI UX, we talk about then having templates and pages, but if we want to think about this in the context of Power BI, we should use more literal language. Now, for us, our atoms, or building blocks, are objects. These are our DAX measures, for example, when we aggregate columns, or date tables, even buttons in a Power BI report. These are our ground level objects that we combine up together to create patterns. And this is the next layer, our patterns or when multiple objects come together to serve a specific purpose. For example, a Pareto analysis of sales in DAX, currency conversion, time intelligence, even a specific way of formatting our visuals or visual containers. These are all patterns. And we combine patterns together to create visuals. Visuals are the functional units that answer data questions. And we combine visuals in report pages, and combine report pages in reports in order to answer data questions and to address entire business areas, going from looking at a customer sales report to our month-to-date sales app, for example. This is a really helpful way to think about the kind of hierarchical progression of complexity and scope when it comes to the things that we're developing. It's particularly useful so that we can understand these more upstream components, identify ones that we can reuse, and turn them into templates so that we can apply those templates to new models, new reports, so we don't have to create these things from scratch every time. If we can do this with key objects and patterns, even with visuals and page templates, it can save us a tremendous amount of effort and time so that we can focus on more interesting and complicated problems. In the rest of this video, we're going to talk about a few specific examples and some tools that you can use specifically for objects and patterns. The scope of this video is mainly just to introduce these ideas and to get people to start thinking about it. And in later articles and videos, we'll go into a little bit more detail, elaborating on more sophisticated tools and approaches, and also how you can maintain a library of such objects, patterns, visuals, and templates to be able to use them in the most effective way possible. We're also not going to talk about all of the tools that you can use, but just a subset that you can use for local development. We're first going to talk about objects. Objects are the individual building blocks, the foundational elements that you use to create everything else. 
These could be, for example, simple measures like the sales amount or even something like a date table. So if we look at this model, a Contoso model right now, we have some date table inside of it. But how would we add a date table like this? We could add it with DAX, we could add it with Power Query, we could add it upstream. Any one of these is possible, but it's possible that we might be creating it from scratch, which is of course not optimal. Ideally, we have some kind of template that we can reuse, something that's reusable in our organization or within our team or for ourselves. If you don't have anything like this, a good way to do it is with Bravo. Now let's say, for example, that we don't have this date table. Let's delete them from the model. And what we could do is if we didn't have a date template that we could use ourselves, we could connect to our model in Bravo. It's a free tool from SQL BI, an open source tool from SQL BI, where uh, we can actually create a date table, a new date table based off of a number of templates. So we can choose from a number of templates that are available to us, even having a custom template that we can modify ourselves. This is of course not the only thing that Bravo does. We can also do some simple analysis of our model, format our DAX, but we're just going to focus on adding our date table for now. So I'm going to add a standard date table template. I'm going to set an interval, so I'm going to choose the years that I want to be included in my date table. And I only want the years to be from the sales table columns, delivery date and order date. I don't want the customer's birthday to be taken into account. 1964 is not so important. I'm mainly interested in the last few years when we've actually had deliveries and customer orders. So this is a good thing to keep in mind when we are creating our own templates in the future, it's important to have these kind of parameters so that our templates are more flexible. Because if our templates are too rigid, then we're not going to use them. But if they're flexible, then we can use them in more use cases and they're going to be more helpful. We'll see more examples of this in a minute. So we can change some other parameters, we can add holidays, and we can even add time intelligence patterns. But right now we're only focused on our objects, our date table object, so we're not going to do that just yet. We'll preview the changes. We can see we have these two tables and they're added to the model. So all we have to do at this point is just create the relationships where we have our delivery date, so with our fact table and with our currency conversion here. Okay, so that's a really easy way, Bravo, to uh, have a date table template. So if you don't yet have a date table template, Bravo is a really nice way to approach that. Now, what about your measures? So often when you create a model in Power BI, you need to create a lot of measures. A lot of measures that sum the columns or perform an average or things like this, these explicit measures. Well. You could also use Tabular Editor in order to make this a lot easier. There's scripts that you can use in Tabular Editor. So you can open either Tabular Editor 2 or Tabular Editor 3 and use C Sharp scripts in order to do this. Now, I have Tabular Editor open right here. I have my model on the left hand side. I have the sales table. I have a number of measures that are available. Now, let's say that just for the sake of demonstration, so this isn't necessarily true, but let's say that all of these columns I wanted to aggregate uh, in one way or another. So I of course don't want to do that right now, but just want to demonstrate it. I could use a script or a macro to be able to create the measures in bulk so that it will then hide those columns and then create the measures, organizing them in a display folder. Now, I don't want to have the total delivery date or some nonsense like this, so I'll press Control Z and it's done. But this is just a simple example of how you can create and apply these templates. And what's useful is in Tabular Editor that it is context sensitive. So depending on what I'm clicking on and what the contents of my model are, I can apply those templates selectively. To give an example of that, I have a currency conversion pattern here. So if we move on to patterns, I could also apply this scripting technique to uh, currency conversion. Now, currency conversion is a very common requirement in many different models. And it's something that you know we often tend to do very similarly within an organization or within a team. So it can be very beneficial to come up with 
a kind of template that we can apply when we need to make a new model or when uh, there's a new team who wants to do something and they haven't, they haven't done this before. We could give them that template, for example. Now, currency conversion is something that can take a lot of time and effort to do, but if we already have a defined pattern, then it makes a lot of sense to turn it into a template. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the measure and we're going to delete the tables that we've used to do this. We're going to get a bunch of errors, but that's fine. So, and normally now our visuals aren't working because we don't have the currency conversion. But since this is a pattern that in this hypothetical example, this is just the pattern we use in our organization, we've created a template to do it in a script. So we have in tabular editor, a C sharp script, and we're going to add all the necessary objects that we need. So it's context sensitive. So we need to select the currency code in the fact tables. So we just have one fact table here. And then we're going to run this script. We have to select the from currency column. So that's here. So we have some interactivity to make it flexible. It's creating the relationships, it's creating the, the tables, and then we need to select the to currency column. Okay, so now we've created the necessary dependent objects for the pattern, and we're going to apply the pattern to the sales amount measure, which is here, and that will create the measure that we just deleted actually. So we have a second script that will apply the pattern that we just created just for organizational purposes. They're separate scripts. So we'll apply this. We have to select the exchange rate column and it adds the measure and organizes it into the display folder. And if everything worked, then we should be able to go back and uh, we don't see it yet. Uh, we need to probably still to write the changes to our model, of course. <coughs> okay, so now that we have written those changes to the model, we have refreshed the calculated tables to make sure they're processed. We have the currency conversion working as it did before, before we deleted everything. So these kind of patterns, currency conversion, time intelligence, uh, Pareto analysis, these kind of very standard patterns are very good candidates for templates. And a way that we can implement those templates are with tools like Tabular Editor. There's other tools that we can use as well. So I'm just showing Tabular Editor as one example. But for example, we could use the Fabric Cat Tools Python library uh, in a Fabric notebook. However, there we're going to be limited to specifically our uh, semantic models that have been published to a workspace in Fabric capacity. So it's important to keep in mind that we create templates for objects and patterns that we can reuse for both models and reports. And this is important because we've talked so far only about models, but this applies to reports as well. So an example of a pattern in a report could be how we format a specific container or even a group of different things that are being rendered in the report. So for example, here we have this left-hand side of the report, and this could be something I want to reuse across multiple reports, but it's a collection of different objects. For example, shapes like separators, buttons, which we need to make in Power BI in the canvas. And <coughs> we don't want to recreate these things every single time we want to use them, but instead it makes more sense that we, uh, we create them once, we save them somewhere in a separate PBIX, and then if I want to create a new report page, I can just copy these grouped visuals into the new page and it's good to go. I don't need to recreate it. It helps improve standardization. It makes it easy. It saves me time. Uh, it's very useful to be able to do. So, but this is just to illustrate that objects and patterns are not specific to your model. An object could be a button. An object could be a uh, text, for example and combining these things together are also patterns. And the result of this is that you end up with visuals. So a visual is a combination of both model and report patterns as well as objects to be able to produce a functional result that we use to answer data questions. So for example, I have a card here that's telling us the sales compared to a specific target. 
we have a image that indicates whether it's up or down, some conditional formatting, and so on. However, the problem is, if I wanted to reuse this visual, or I want to reuse a different visual from a different report, so let's say this is my visual library, I want to reuse this set of uh, this visual, which is a, a set of cards, I think, or something. If I copy and paste this in, of course, I'm going to get an error because I'm missing all the fields. But the problem is that I don't have an easy way to be able to swap out these fields. I can move them up, I can move them down, but I can't swap them out without doing some fandangling, going into the metadata and doing that myself. So there are some limitations to keep in mind, which is why in this article, in this video, we're mainly talking about objects and patterns and how to be able to reuse them. However, there is important to be able to definitely document and save visuals in a library so that you can at least be able to replace those fields if necessary or understand how you made that visual so you can reproduce it. And hopefully in the future, tools will make such visual libraries a lot easier to be able to maintain, but also more importantly to apply to new reports. So in summary, atomic design is a very useful and interesting way to think about modular design and development in Power BI. You start by creating your base foundational objects, which come together to form your patterns, which you use to be able to create visuals. Multiple visuals end up in report pages, which themselves end up in reports. Being able to identify these different layers and to make sure that you create reusable templates can be very helpful and save you a lot of time and effort. In the future, we'll talk a little bit more about how you can create and maintain these libraries and the tools and techniques that make this possible. For now, we just want to introduce this concept so that people can start to think about it and because we think it's particularly useful to know. Enjoy creating reports. we can combine multiple patterns together in order to fulfill a specific purpose. In this case, 